President, it is with a heavy heart that we voted for this resolution and with a clear understanding of the terrible toll of this uninvited imposed upon war on Ukraine. More than 20,000 people internally displaced due to illegal annexation of Crimea. At least 5,665 people killed since ceasefire announcement last September, of whom some 2,000 killed, of which 2,000 since last September. Nearly 14,000 wounded, some one and a half million forced to flee their homes. The Office of High Commissioner of Ref for Your Refugees is warning that further escalation will prove catastrophic for the 5.2 million people living in the midst of the conflict in eastern Ukraine. Since the announcement of Minsk ceasefire in September 2014, the millions have grabbed at least 550 square kilometers of Ukraine's territories and keep on grabbing more. Their advances have been buttressed by an ongoing influx of Russian arms and sophisticated weaponry, including under the pretext of humanitarian convoys. In the past few weeks, leading to this latest ceasefire, militants attacked, expanded, attacks expanded towards cities of Mariupol, Kramatorsk, Artemivsk, Shastya, and others. Even as the drafting of the package of measures for the implementation of Minsk agreements was taking place, reports were incoming of tanks rolling on the Ukrainian soil and more casualties, including among the children. The Ukrainian city of Debaltsevo is under siege, even as we speak. Ukraine is holding on, trying to defend a piece of its own land, away from the ceasefire lines established in the Minsk agreements. Heavily armed criminals are continuing their onslaught against Debaltsevo and threaten to continue their deadly march up to Kharkiv and further. Yes, this council must speak out in support of the ceasefire. But we know full well that previous ceasefires, whether declared unilaterally by the Ukrainian government or established by the Minsk agreements last September, have been repeatedly violated. Even this most recent ceasefire agreement is already being violated as we speak by Russia-sponsored militants. Russian tanks, APCs, howitzers, grads, and tornadoes in the hands of the militants are holding Ukraine's eastern part captive. Only the most naive can imagine that the militants could have waged an ever-expanding war without external help. Without Russia's direct support, the so-called separatists would have fizzled out, dwindled into non-existence many months ago. Peace would have been restored and thousands of lives would have been saved. Instead, Russia has chosen to sponsor and arm and protect the militants. It is a direct party to this conflict and bears the primary responsibility for the conflict that is daring into Ukraine's flesh. Mr. President, the package that today's resolution endorsed is undoubtedly flawed, but it is the only thing that we have. For it to work, all the parties involved, including Russia, must honor their commitments in full and in their entirety, including the Minsk agreements of September 2014. These agreements reached in Minsk last September cannot be swept under the carpet. The package of measures which was agreed on 12 February is not and cannot be interpreted as a replacement or a substitute of these accords, but only as a set of measures aimed at their implementation. We know well what needs to be done. Russian troops and armaments need to be withdrawn from Ukraine's territory. A viable OAC monitored mechanism must be established to monitor the ceasefire. Militants must stop blocking their access. Russia must stop supporting illegal militias operating in the eastern part of Ukraine. Ukraine needs to re-establish control of its international borders without any preconditions. The humanitarian access needs to be secured and respect for international human rights and international humanitarian law restored. All hostages and unlawfully detained persons must be released, including Ukrainian pilot Nada Savchenko, a former peacekeeper, the only Ukrainian female soldier who has served in peacekeeping troops in Iraq illegally held now in the Russian Federation, needs to be released as per the package of measures agreed on 12 February in Minsk. Mr. President, peace cannot be achieved without accountability. We have witnessed multiple times elsewhere how impunity breeds more impunity, eventually provoking new cycles of violence. The reports of the Office of High Commissioner for Human Rights have repeatedly pointed to the extent of the serious crimes and abysmal state of lawlessness in the militant-held areas. 
Only this past weekend, photos of a self-proclaimed militant chief Zaharchuk were circulating with beaten prisoners of war, another reminder of the many violations of international humanitarian law by the militants. We want to put on the record our firm conviction that justice and accountability must be part and parcel of the path out of this devastating unprovoked war against Ukraine. The perpetrators of most serious crimes, and for them, we can only look back into the reports by the Office of High Commissioner for Human Rights, there are lots of these described, including those responsible for the downing on Malaysia Airlines flight MH17 must be held to account. We reiterate our call on Ukraine to complete accession to the Rome Statute in this respect. Mr. President, after the devastating war, horrors of World War II, Europe has shown remarkable will and ability to pursue the path of reconciliation and peace. What started with Franco-German reconciliation, the European Coalition Steel Community, became a unique model of reconciliation and integration which has evolved over time into the European Union of today, a model for democracy, peace, prosperity and human rights, whose appeal continues to draw European nations eager to join its ranks. It is reckless and profoundly dangerous to seek to turn the clock back on that spirit of reconciliation, solidarity and cooperation which gave Europe and the world its longest ever period of peace. Russia's continued violations of UN Charter, the Helsinki Final Act and numerous other agreements to which it is signatory, as well as its attempts to redraw the internationally recognized borders by force threaten that peace. In Minsk, the presidents of Russia, Ukraine, France and Germany have recommitted themselves to the sovereignty independence, unity, and territorial integrity of Ukraine, although some of these words somehow managed to slip out of today's resolution. We expect that commitment to be respected unconditionally by all, Russia in particular. We ask the UN to continue its active engagement in seeking a durable solution to this conflict through its good offices, mediation, monitoring of the human rights, and provision of the humanitarian assistance. I thank you, Mr. President. 感谢立陶宛代表的发言。我现在请乍德代表发言。